Hey guys, welcome to another video from Foolish Engineer. This time we'll check out how a half bridge converter works by understanding its waveforms. We'll also see its advantages, disadvantages, and where do we use this converter. So let's go for a ride. The half bridge converter has two MOSFETs. Two input capacitors which are connected in series, a high frequency transformer, two short key diodes, an inductor, and an output capacitor. The circuit diagram of this converter is like this. This is the primary side and this is the secondary side of the converter. These both are electrically isolated from each other with the help of a transformer. The primary side of the Harbridge converter is connected to the input. And secondary side is connected to the electrical load to which we have to provide the power. The pulse width modulation signals are provided to this MOSFET which switch the MOSFETs on and off. And that's how we control the direction of the current and we can get the regulated output power. Let's keep a very important thing in mind that these MOSFETs never turn on together. Only one MOSFET works in each cycle. We have to provide a DC power supply at the input. These capacitors are in series. Both of them have the same capacitance value and they are directly connected to the input DC supply. Due to this, the input charges each capacitor up to half of input voltage. Let's understand the working of this converter with waveforms. We'll understand the working of the Harbridge converter in two parts. In the first cycle, the MOSFET Q1 is on and Q2 is kept off. In the second cycle, the MOSFET Q1 is off and MOSFET Q2 is turned on. Well, this switching cycle doesn't work immediately. After every cycle, there is a delay in the process where both MOSFETs are turned off for some time. Why? We'll see that while checking the working of this converter. The relation between input and output voltage is given by this formula. Where D is the duty cycle, NP is the number of primary turns wound around the primary side of the transformer and NS is the number of secondary turns wound around the secondary side of the transformer. Initially, PWM is given to the gate of the MOSFET Q1. Let's consider these both are N-channel MOSFETs. When the gate pulse is high, the MOSFET turns on. There is no gate pulse given to the MOSFET Q2, so MOSFET Q2 is off. Now the current tries to flow through the MOSFET Q1, primary side of the transformer and the capacitor C1. The current will flow through the dotted side of the primary winding. Now the MOSFET Q1 has bypassed one of these capacitors connected in series. The input voltage is directly connected to the primary side of the transformer. As the voltage across this capacitor is already half of the input voltage, then the voltage across transformer primary will also be half of the input voltage. And eventually, it equalizes the potential difference. The voltage across MOSFET Q1 is zero because it is on. Now if we check the circuit diagram, the MOSFET Q2 has directly been connected to the input. So the voltage across MOSFET Q2 is equal to the input voltage. The primary side of the transformer is nothing but an inductor. Initially it opposes the change in current. So the current across primary side increases linearly up to the maximum value. Due to electromagnetic induction, the voltage induces on the secondary side of the transformer. So the diode D1 gets forward biased and current starts flowing through it. In the first cycle, diode D2 is reverse biased. So there is no current flowing through this diode. Well, the energy from the secondary winding is provided to charge the inductor. So current flows to the inductor as well and it stores the energy. This both inductor and capacitor connected at the output 
filter out the ripple and provide the constant regulated output to the load. Now we can turn on the MOSFET Q2 immediately. But MOSFETs have some limitations. They take some time to turn on properly after providing the gate pulse which is known as the rise time and they take some time to turn off as well even if the gate threshold voltage is turned off which is known as the fall time. So a condition might arise where primary of the transformer will directly get connected to the input supply. So the total input voltage will get applied to the primary side and this is too much for this transformer. So due to this it will saturate. What happens if a transformer saturates? Well, it suddenly acts as a very low resistance component, which creates a short circuit. So to avoid that, MOSFET Q1 is turned off and MOSFET Q2 is also kept off for some time. Now the input is cut off from the transformer, so the voltage across primary falls to zero immediately as the MOSFETs are off they share the equal input voltage. So the voltage across each MOSFET is half of input. There is no flow of current in the primary side of the transformer. The flow of current is interrupted suddenly. So the inductor induces flyback voltage which has the magnitude of V is equal to L di by dt where L is the inductance of the inductor and di by dt is the change in current with respect to time. Due to this, the direction of current remains the same. This current flows through these diodes and both diodes D1 and D2 get forward bias. So the current flow through the center tap secondary winding and this current flows such a way that it cancels out the magnetic flux present in the transformer core and resets the transformer. So this process prevents the saturation of the transformer. As the stored energy in the inductor flows to the secondary circuit, the current flows out of the inductor. Well, this cycle doesn't affect the output at all and we get the regulated output to the load. Now in the second cycle, MOSFET Q1 is kept off and MOSFET Q2 is turned on. If you notice the circuit diagram, the dotted side of the primary is pulled down to the ground and by considering the earlier principle, the voltage is developed across the primary but the direction of the current is reversed. So the voltage across the primary side of the transformer goes up to minus half of input voltage. The voltage across MOSFET Q2 is zero because it is on and the voltage across Q1 goes to the input voltage. The current flowing through the primary side of the transformer increases linearly in the negative direction. Now the voltage induces on the secondary side and the current starts flowing through the opposite direction. So the diode D2 gets forward biased. In the second cycle, diode D1 gets reverse biased. So there is no current flowing through this D1. The energy provided to the inductor so the current flows to the inductor again and the capacitor and inductor filter out the ripple providing constant regulated output to the load. Now MOSFET Q2 is turned off and MOSFET Q1 is also kept off for some time. So the voltage across primary falls to zero immediately. As the MOSFETs are off, they share the same input voltage and voltage across each MOSFET is half of input voltage. There is no flow of current in the primary side of the transformer. Now, just like the earlier cycle, the current flows through these diodes due to the inductor. The current flows out of the inductor, so it decreases. And we get the regulated output. So these cycles repeat every time during the operation. And that's how a half bridge converter works. So as you see, unlike forward converters, we don't need to add any additional circuitry to reset the transformer. Because this delay in between the switching of the MOSFET does our job pretty well. If you want to learn about the forward converters, you can check out this card above. 
Also, the link of those videos are in the description. This hub bridge converter can handle high power. So this can be used in various applications like in the UPS of a computer. It also can be used in a DC to DC converter of an electric vehicle or a battery charger for small electric vehicles like scooters or tricycles. There are many advantages of this hub bridge converter. We can use a hub bridge converter up to 700 watts. Due to this topology, we can utilize the transformer fully. As there are two MOSFETs in the series, the voltage stress on each MOSFET is limited up to just input voltage. Even if the MOSFETs are switching in the circuit, these capacitors balance the voltage on the transformer up to half of the input voltage in each cycle. There are some disadvantages of this converter as well. Due to just single winding on the primary side, more amount of current flows through this. In this, we need a high side driver to control this MOSFET. Well, there are so many components in this design. Due to that, its cost and complexity to control increases very much. So that's it about the Harbridge converter. I hope you understood something from this. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Hit the like button if you like this video, subscribe to my channel and finally. Thanks for watching.